Okay, so I'm going to go over the packaging here. So the first thing, when you open it up, you see a, a warning about selecting the right voltage test uh, roll of filament there, 50 grams. So nothing in there can really move around or rattle around. It's really nice, actually. Nicely designed packaging. I like to place a foam mat or towel on my work surface so parts and screws don't easily roll away while I'm working. And we got a manual with twist ties here and a registration form. The manual is actually pretty nice and uh, parts in here are well documented, easy to read, nicely laid out. So here I am just removing everything out of the box, um, just being careful not to crack that heated glass bed there. And I did find some loose screws in the bottom, so just be aware of that. I think that came from the little LCD mount holder, T-nuts and bolts. So I'm just getting everything situated, checking it out. So as I was pulling things out of the box, I uh, wanted to make sure all the bearings were operating smoothly and this one here was kinda stiff the one I was pointing to so I tried adding a little bit of mineral oil to the bearing to try and maybe free up the grease uh, but didn't actually work very well so just something to note there that um, some of these bearings are kinda kinda tight so what I'm doing here is just as I take all the parts out I'm making sure all the nuts and bolts are secured tightly. I've had printers in the past where uh, just after like 50 hours of printing I find lots of things loosened up and I think really they probably weren't tight to begin with so so actually I couldn't find anything that was loose. Everything seemed to be tight and the bolts were adequate length. I have a uh, previous printer where some of the bolts were too short so they couldn't really engage in the threads very well so everything was correct and nothing was skimped out here as far as the nuts and bolts go and the nuts were a lot of them were nylon lock type of nuts so they really shouldn't work their way loose. First step is to install the z-axis supports and we'll use the m5 by 45 bolts for this Everything's really nicely packaged and labeled as well. So that's pretty much the gist of it is you, you know, pull the parts out, find the correct bolts, and assemble them per the manual. I'm not going to go through each piece separately. There's already a guide on YouTube from the manufacturer uh, on that. But I did want to point out some of the kind of hiccups and pitfalls and things to look out for as I was putting this together so this will be more of a kind of a critical eye and commentary of the design of the printer but I'll include the assembly in sort of like a 10x speed here just in case it's helpful. I'm putting the threaded rod into the z-axis motor here and I'm trying not to tighten things down too tight because it's just aluminum threads which is a soft metal so I don't want to strip things out which I have done before so something to note there. So I'm at the point here where I'm deciding whether or not I want to put the upgraded uh, extruder arm kit to replace the stock plastic one because I've read and seen people have issues with the bearing that pushes against the extruder gear just cracking um, and causing problems so I ended up deciding to do that in this case, so I'll go ahead and include the footage for the the upgrade. Uh, but again, it's not going to be a step-by-step -step thing. It's going to be more of a, you know, slowing down and talking about some of the, the issues that I ran into and things to note along the way. But I will include the footage in case it's helpful. Okay, so the nice part about the upgrade is it's all aluminum and it's all metal obviously um, and I'm just kinda showing it side by side here the two differences and you can see on the top as compared to the bottom there's this like kind of like a beak protrusion where the filament feeds in at 
there we go, I kind of pointed out, show it more clearly here. And I think that just makes it easier for the filament to travel into the into the hole. If we flip them over, we can see the, the all metal is nicer too because the plastic's actually kind of hollowed out. And I'm showing you my kind of improvised pointer here with a zip tie, but um, yeah, you can, you can actually go in pretty far. Okay, here I'm actually installing the uh, the upgraded assembly onto the extruder. And there was something about this I didn't didn't like. It had to do with the way the lever arm spring sat. And I'll show this in a different clip here, but uh, I figured I would show this in fast speed just for reference. There's the lever arm there. That's kind of the main upgrade. And I'm placing the bearing in there. The problem area is the spring and bolt. You can see in the diagram in the background, that's seven and eight. There's the spring and the adjustment thread. And see that screw right there I was just putting in? I didn't care for that screw. Later I'll show you what I replaced it with, but just it's too floppy. There's just too much slop in there. I'll show you what I did to kind of help with that. So what I ended up doing was using a internal Allen hex head bolt. Um, you can see the heads on those are a lot thicker than, like you can see in the parts diagram the back at number seven. And the screws that are laying there on the table, they're really thin. So the spring doesn't really grab it very well. It kind of slops around in between the coils and the windings. So I think this is a better solution. Okay, now we're getting ready to mount the Z-axis stepper motor into place. And actually here I put it in the wrong position. So I had to flip, rotate the printer. So it's, you know, I'm looking at the back. And that's where it belongs. And there's a, something I want to point out here is that the mounting bracket is plastic. And don't tighten it too much, you might crack the mount, and you'll need to adjust the threaded rod at the top later anyways, so keep it on there kind of a little bit loose. And I also want to point out that it's kind of free floating there, you can see there's a gap at the bottom of the stepper motor, and the extruded frame, I took it off so you can't see it now, but we'll, we'll talk about it later, it's something I think it's worth noting, because there is going to be a load, a vertical load on that motor, and it's kind of just free hanging there. There you can see it. Okay. Okay, here we're actually just installing the extruder drive assembly onto the x-axis rail. And if it's too loose, we'll talk about how to adjust it so it pinches that rail tightly. Okay, here I'm installing the belts and the uh, actual hot end onto the x-axis uh, rail. Nothing really worth noting here other than just making sure everything's oriented the correct way. Okay, like I was saying earlier, if things seem too loose on the x-axis, the little rubber rollers, uh, don't be tempted to mess with them right now. Just go ahead and slide them on and leave them on. But I'm including what I did as just to show you what mistake I did and something to avoid. I I, I went way too far down the rabbit hole here to try and get things perfectly aligned and tightened. And I didn't need to. And I'll explain to you uh, here in a bit why that is. Uh, but just don't worry about it. Slide the the hot end assembly onto the x-axis and just and just leave it. I mean, here I was like bending metal with pliers uh, to try and get the rollers to to fit on perfectly, but it ended up just being a mess. Not much to note here on step five. I'm just installing the limit switch for the x-axis and uh, as you can see I already installed the the x-axis tensioner there. 
Okay, here I am installing the x-axis onto the the z posts here. And again, I'm kind of going the same rabbit hole of trying to get things snug. And I would not worry about it at this point, but of course, uh, I do worry about it. <laughs> but I'll explain here how I should how you should do this and kind of what mistakes I made. So if we look closely here, my arm is kind of in the way. I'm sorry for that, but you can see that what I'm doing is not the right way to adjust these these wheels. Uh, you don't want to mess with those bolts. What you want to mess with is if you look at the rubber wheels, there's some posts that they're riding on. There's smooth aluminum looking posts and then there's a hexed shaped brass colored nut, hex nut. And what you want to do is adjust that hex nut and the reason that works is because the hole in that hex nut is kind of off center so that when you rotate the hex nut it'll actually move the bolt that the wheel rides on and so that's how you want to adjust the tension or the grab that the wheels uh, use to ride on the extruded aluminum frame there where the slots are cut into so yeah that that hex nut is there for a reason it it it's made for the wrench which I'm showing there on the table um, to use to adjust see how there's still side play there I don't know if you saw that but use the included wrench to rotate that that nut Okay, here I'm placing the x-axis onto the, uh, finally, onto the z-posts, and you can see the threaded rod uh, doesn't quite align very well. I have to kind of bend it to insert it in, and so uh, that's the reason why earlier I suggested to just keep that loose down there. So here I am loosening it back up so that I could more easily insert it there, and I'm moving the axes down to kind of where I think commonly most prints are going to print at like the most common position of that axes and then I tighten it in place cut out some cardstock folded it up to make a shim for that stepper motor because I, I felt with the load of the X axes and the motor and the extruder and everything that might cause a little bit of a uh, downward force on that and so the plastic bracket and I just didn't feel very good about it so I put that shim in place I don't know if it was necessary but I felt like the added support there was a good idea okay here I am doing the last few steps of uh, putting the gantry on the top and I don't think there's a whole lot to say about this here other than uh, the T-nuts that fit into the side for the LCD holder which I'm installing right now they're really finicky to get in and I found using a magnet you can see there to kind of help me maneuver the nuts into place so that they didn't just twist out and pop out uh, helped quite a bit and you can see there I had the mod to tuck the screen under but I ended up not using it because the tensioner on the x-axis ended up being the same length so overall I didn't find a whole lot of value for it because I wasn't really saving much space and here I'm just kind of getting things situated with the tubing I did install an upgraded Capricorn tube and so I'm using the old one, the stock one, as a comparison for the link. So I can trim off the new one to the correct length. And I did place a padded envelope on the bed just in case the Z-axis were to slip and fall down. It wouldn't kind of crash into the bed. Just as a crash pad there, basically.
The last part was to install the spool holder and the filament guide, which is an extra thing you can print off on Thingiverse. It took me a while to figure out how to, to put it on. I ended up having to trim some of the plastic off so it would fit. It actually goes over the top of the spool holder post and you push it down. And I had the same problem with the T-nuts rotating in while I was trying to install the spool holder. So I spent quite a time trying to get that worked out. Lastly, the protective little caps on the gantry on the sides there was all that was remaining to do and that pretty much wrapped up the assembly of this printer. Oh, there's one more thing. The wiring all needs to be connected, but they're all clearly labeled. Uh, they have nice little yellow bands that show which stepper motor to connect each to, as well as for the limit switches. Overall, I think this printer was designed very well and I enjoyed putting it together. Uh, hopefully some of this fumbling around and uh, pitfalls that I went through will help you guys, um, or at least get you some insight and taste onto how you might go about putting this printer together. Alright, thanks.